The sixth question says we have 1 minus x square upon x times 1 minus 2x. And remember, remember the steps for integration. Before integration, we need to check whether this is a proper rational function. That is, whether the degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator. If not, you will have to divide using long division first and then try to convert into partial fractions after that. So, if I observe degree of denominator, that is x square, right? Degree is 2. Oh, here also we have an x square. So, the degree of numerator is also 2. So, we will have to divide. Yes, we will have to divide. So, first step will be to divide. Okay. How do we do that? This is not a very complicated thing. As you can see over here, what you will see is 1 minus x square upon this is x minus 2x square. Okay. Let us try to create this over here. Since we have to divide with this, let us try to bring some quotient. Right. Let us try to write dividend as this. So, if minus x square, if I want to write it as minus 2x square, I will have to multiply it with 1 by 2. So, this is 1 by 2, x minus 2x square is what I will get. So, this is a pretty simple question. I am solving it with this approach, direct approach, right? So, this is half times x minus 2x square, which is minus x square over here, which goes okay. Plus, x by 2 is extra and we will have to subtract that x by 2, right? So, this is x by 2 is extra. So, we will have to subtract minus x by 2 over there. And what else? You have a plus 1 over here extra, right? And what do we have in the denominator is x minus 2x square. This is what you have. Is that okay? Yes. Now, dividing this, this becomes 1 by 2 separate. And let us take a minus common over here. Minus 1 by 2 also common over here. Okay. So, minus 1 by 2 will make it x minus 2 in the numerator over here. So, this becomes x minus 2 in the numerator. In the denominator, you have x minus 2x square, which can be done as x times 1 minus 2x again. Okay. So, this is one term. The integral of half is pretty simple. The integral of this expression has to be found. For finding the integral of this, we will have to write this as sum of partial fractions. Right or not? Yes. Let us try to do that. Oh, we could have used linear upon quadratic as well. Yes, that is something we should discuss in the previous question that this type of question could be solved using linear upon quadratic ideas by converting denominator into a perfect square. But before that, writing the numerator as a times differential coefficient of denominator plus b. But that approach as compared to partial fractions will be slightly longer. So, we will prefer in general also if we get this kind of question, we will prefer this approach which I am discussing now. That is the approach of partial fractions. Okay. So, this particular expression now and we want to focus on this expression. This becomes x minus 2 over x times 1 minus 2x. This has to be written as this is a linear term a upon x plus b upon 1 minus 2x. Okay, and finding the values of a and b is important now. So, the next thing is to find the values of a and b and we know some approaches to find the values of a and b, some shortcut approach, some long approach. So, which of these approaches do you think will we follow? So, we can follow any of these. The NCRD people love the longer approach, but we have the shorter approach as well. Let me give you this particular solution with shorter approach first. So, for finding the values of a, we'll multiply with x and this becomes, this x goes away, we'll substitute x equal to 0, right? This denominator becomes 0 at x equal to 0. So, this is minus 2 upon 1. So, a is equal to minus 2 using shorter approach and b is equal to what? For b, this 1 minus 2x becomes 0 at x equal to 1 by 2, right? So, this will go over there, remove this, put x equal to 1 by 2. So, this is 1 by 2 minus 2 which is minus 3 by 2 upon 1 by 2, which is minus 3, this tells me b is equal to minus 3, right? And what about the longer approach? And using the longer approach, the longer approach says numerators have to be compared. That implies x minus 2 is equal to a 1 minus 2x plus bx, okay? And now, compare the coefficients of x and constant term. Compare. Coefficient of x is 1, which is equal to minus 2a plus b. Constant term is minus 2, which is equal to mm, a. So, a is directly obtained as minus 2. We substitute a as minus 2. This becomes 4, which goes over there. b will be minus 3. Oh, this is also simple. Yes, in this question, this and this both are simple because there are only two terms, right? Therefore, therefore, we have written this complete expression as sum of two partial fractions. And now, I can integrate this. Therefore, i, which was actually equal to this, 1 minus x square over x times 1 minus 2x dx has been simplified as 1 by 2 separate minus 1 by 2 times 
this expression has been simplified as a upon x. a is minus 2 upon x plus b which is minus 3 upon 1 minus 2x and integral of this whole expression with respect to x is what we are looking forward to. How do we integrate this? Let us simplify this a bit further. This is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 into minus 2 is plus 1 by x and minus 1 by 2 minus 3 is plus 3 by 2 1 upon 1 minus 2x over here. This is what you have dx, right? So this integral is simple, this integral is simple. What about this one? This is a linear expression of x, right? The coefficient of x is minus 2. We'll have to divide with that minus 2 at the end. That's something you should be doing, right? So integral of 1 by 2 becomes x by 2. 1 by x becomes log modulus of x plus 3 by 2 log modulus 1 minus 2x. And divide with the minus 2, this particular term has to be divided. So dividing with minus 2 is important plus constant term. Or this can further be simplified as x plus 2, x by 2 plus log mod x minus 3 by 4 log modulus 1 minus 2x plus constant. That is the required answer for this particular question over here. And that is how you solve the process. It is important. You see, integration only occurs over here. Once that function has been converted into an integrable form, Therefore, then comes the condition, then comes integration actually. Integration in itself is not difficult. The difficult thing is here only, that is conversion. First of all, identifying that this can be converted into partial fractions and then conversion into actual partial fractions is what you are looking forward to. After that, integration becomes very easy, right? That's all that you have in this particular question as you can see.